Take this block of units here in the Melbourne suburb of Montmorency. They look pretty typical out front. It's only when you step out the back that you discover a unique and beautiful oasis. Now, this is actually the garden of a good friend of mine, and I already feel like Alice walking into Wonderland. Look at you busy in the garden. Hey, good day. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Absolutely fantastic to have you here again. Garden is amazing. And I know that it was a blank canvas when you first came here. You want to tell us how you created this? Well, it was a very good process. I, uh, after clearing out what was here before, um, I really, you know, it's a small space, but I really wanted to make the most of it. You know, it's about 270 square metres. It's an odd shaped block. Um, and I really wanted to get the most out of it but also create little vistas and little journeys and, you know, spots to discover. Little secret surprises as you walk around the garden. Well, you're actually more than a gardener, aren't you? You're also a nurse and a horticultural therapist. So do you find that your garden is really a place to escape and wind down? Very much so. It's my little escape from the big wide world outside and um, it's just a calm spot for me. There's also lots of really quirky elements in your garden. Tell me, how do you find these pieces? There's so much wonderful little items or pieces of materials that we can make things out of. Yeah, and all recycled and reused and it's very sustainable. Yeah, and I really like using older materials because they've got a lot of history and there's character and there's age to it and you go, yeah, that looks fantastic. Should we take a look around the garden? Let's. Okay, can't wait to see more. You realise if I sit down here, I may never get up again. This is a great spot. How did you come up with the big, bold red? Uh, I was inspired by a friend's house. He painted this, his whole house this colour, and I just loved it. I think it contrasts perfectly with the uh, dark colour of the fence, and it's a real pop. As a gardener, uh, we tend to be too busy, and I've deliberately put garden seating zones uh, and just sit and enjoy it. I love it. I've always loved your planting palette here. What is the criteria that you use to select your plants? Um, for me, I really like a mixture of plants. I really love foliage. So different uh, plants that have shape, texture, size, uh, that really just combine well with each other and give me that really nice, lush, verdant kind of look. You also want to have time to really enjoy that space. Absolutely. For me, I want to low maintenance so I can actually just enjoy a meander. A meander. Shall we meander? Let's. <laughs> I just wanted to show you a few of my favourite features in this garden. So take a look at this. This is the Muhlenbeck here, or maidenhair vine. So believe it or not, this is a climber. And underneath this is steel mesh. So it grows so thickly and beautifully that it looks like a living screen. And take a look at this. This really is my cup of tea. <laughs> Green screens are a great way to divide the garden, but what about narrow areas like this? They're always such dead spaces in a garden. I think this is a fantastic way to resolve it. So, for want of a better word, it's kind of like a plant bookcase, but it's filled with pots, some quirky features, and lots of tough, beautiful plants. As you can see, the garden really makes the most of vertical space. So there's lots of open shelving and upcycled planters like this. I also love the way Stevens use plant repetition. So no matter where you go in the garden, you're seeing a lot of the same friendly plant species. And that means the garden has a really nice cohesive design.
Stephen also makes the most of all the different levels throughout the garden, both through strategic planting, but also through the division of space. And what a fun way to make the most of a slippery slope. All right, Stephen, I know you're a man who likes to create something new out of something old, so we're going to make a hanging window box frame. We're using old timbers from a uh, old fence. This is the railing, uh, so let's get started on the frame for that. Beautiful. You supervising? <laughs> All right, let's get cutting. So we've got a couple of pieces here that are at 900 mil and a couple at 800 mil. Um, and now it's time to do some pre-drilling and screwing it together, and then we've got our frame. All right, let's knock it all together. Look at this, as pretty as a picture. All right, so now we've got our frame made. We're going to make the window box planter. So what do we need? This time we're going to use the palings, put a little box by itself, and then we're going to fix it simply to the frame. All right, let's do it. So you like hunting for recycled wood? I do. It's, uh, it's always good to find treasures like this um, because, yeah, as you can see, it's got beautiful age, has a bit of texture, nice bit of history to it. Do you find that the wood you find drives the project or the other way around? That is a really good question because sometimes it's a bit of both. Um, I have the idea of what I'm wanting and I then go hunting, um, but sometimes you just come across treasures and you go, I'll keep that because I know that one day a project will come out of it. I know what I can do with that. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Right, so now I see how it's coming together. So I gather it's just a matter of screwing box to the frame. It should, and it will go in nice and snugly. Beautiful. Another screws. All right, now we're ready to fill this with pots. And the beautiful thing about a feature like this is that you can create very different looks by using different collections of plants and pots, so. Well, you know me, Melissa. I love moving things around my garden and I love different options. So this is looking fantastic. All right, I'll tell you what options I've got. Okay, so we could either go for something a little more traditional. So we get our terracotta pots and we put some beautiful succulents in it. Or we could go the edible look, get some grige planters and fill them with beautiful herbs. Or we could go wild and go for a colourful foliage combination in brightly coloured pots. What do you reckon? Well, let's go wild. This is going in a shady spot on the fence. So let's go bright, colourful, and let's give it a boost. All right, sounds perfect. That looks brilliant. I think we do pretty well, actually. It really does actually sum up Stephen's garden too, I think. It's, it's upcycled and there's just a pop of colour. And it goes to show you can do a lot in a small space. You certainly can. And I will be unstoppable.